Canterbury is home to one of New Zealand's most endangered fish, the mysterious mudfish. So let's find out what these little Cantabrians are up to and what they're all about. Alright, so ready? Yep. Oh, they are cool. Oh, they are neat looking fish. Yeah. And if, if you watch them for a bit, you'll see him um, just take a big gulp of air. That's amazing. So he truly is a fish. Oh, you just did it then. He truly is a fish out of water. Yeah. The cool thing about mudfish is that they breathe air, so they go to the surface of the water, take in a bubble of, of air and then hold it in their mouths and eventually push it past their gills, so that's what helps them survive when times get tough. They were called mudfish because um, they were actually found in the dirt. Well, they used to be known as the fish and chip fish because farmers um, that were digging potato patches used to dig up these fish because what the fish do is when the water um, runs out and dries up in summer, they can burrow down into the ground and live with outside of water. The bones in their head is, are strengthened and that's probably because they have to push their way down through dirt when they're um, looking for something to go out of water. They have this really sinuous movement and, um, and their fins are smaller so that they don't get um, stuck on branches and things. The biggest one that's been found is 18 centimetres, so it's, they're just heaps bigger than this. You know, they'll fill up your whole hand and they get really round as well, like a big cigar. You know, you, you carry, take them out of the water and um, they don't panic at all, they just kind of sit in your hand. And they're quite chilled out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> When they go into their burrows, they're not quite hibernating. They're doing something which is called going into torpor, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. What does that mean? It means that um, as soon as they're put back into water, they come back to life. They don't um, sort of lower their respiratory levels or, or anything like that. You know, they're, they're, they're really just lying there waiting. And they can actually stay in those places, now, believe it or not, for two to three months. One of the biggest threats is um, other fish that eat them, so trout and eels. Um, these guys are really vulnerable to getting eaten. Um, so the best numbers and best populations are sites where they're only mudfish. And the other one is that just um, these habitats are getting destroyed. The farmers are now mainly using piped water and the district council is looking at closing the water races. So um, we're just looking at whether we can keep parts of it open for mudfish. They may be shy, sure, but they are neat little fish. And what's more, they're ours. And it's fantastic to see that our mysterious mudfish have some locals that are looking out for them. There you go, fella. And I'll see you in a year or two.